but a non-fungible token that is basically whatever you can think of, some kind of information, an image, a digital information. Often it's art. That's what NFT refer to. It's an art piece. For example, this very sophisticated art piece, yes, that went for $23.7 million. And somebody called Deepak bought it for $24 million. And now he really owns that thing. Now, this is Deepak has the property right of that image. So there can be many copies of that image. I could just now take a screenshot. Actually, I took a screenshot and put it here into my slide deck. So but that doesn't mean I own the image. Same as I can take a picture of the Mona Lisa. It doesn't mean I own the Mona Lisa. The state of France owns the Mona Lisa. So the property registration system says the state of France owns the honor Mona Lisa. Uh, same as Deepak owns this picture. Even so, I copied it and put it on my slide deck. I mean, I just made a copy. But when push comes to shove and somebody asks who owns it, well, we look on the blockchain and the blockchain registers who has the property for it. And here you can put, you know, in who owns what, basically. And there are many other art pieces. For example, this clock, it's a clock that counts how long Julian Assange, a WikiLeaks founder, has been in prison. It was sold for over $50 million. And this year, the merge was sold for $90 million. Now you can have these pictures, uh, but these pictures actually are not on the blockchain. They will show up in your wallet, same as you have a wallet, a traditional leather wallet from the industrial age. Now we have a digital wallet and you can have all your pictures there, but you can also have a copy somewhere else. Actually, What's on the blockchain is just this here. It's the hash value that refers to it. And we will talk more about uh, the details of how it works. So it's not that this image is on the blockchain. It's only this hash value, the reference hash value that represents, uniquely represents, and it's, it's actually hashed. That's why it's called crypto. It's actually not encrypted. It's hashed. This The representation of that is on the blockchain. That's Otherwise, the blockchain would blow up. For example, you can have a high-definition video and you make an NFT of it, then the video is not stored on the blockchain. Only this hash is stored on the blockchain. And that makes it also very calculable how big the blockchain is. For example, the Bitcoin blockchain, which was the, the first practical application of what we now understand as a blockchain, always fit on the size of an iPhone. So the iPhone storage size has increased as well since 2009. The red is the iPhone storage size. And here in 2017, it became close. But then, you know, Apple increased the storage. So good. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but the Bitcoin blockchain also grows because new ownership registrations are added to the storage, to this ledger. But it always fit on. So the entire Bitcoin block, if it would be full of videos and images, it wouldn't fit on a phone. But it only consists of these hash and they are stored on the blockchain. Actually, I'm, I will get a lot of heat for making things so, so broad brushed here, but actually not only, not even that is stored on the blockchain. Actually, it's a trimmed version of these hashes that is stored on the blockchain, which is called Merkle trees. That's from the 1970s, actually. And uh, when you are hanging out with the blockchain crowd, it's very important to use the word Merkle tree a lot. I, I don't know, it's just because <laughs> I don't even know because I think it sounds funny, but the, the, the Bitcoin people and the, and, and the blockchain people, they will talk about Merkle tree, Merkle tree, Merkle trees a lot. So that's, I wanted to include that. So you have heard that word. And then basically what that means is that the, not the entire hash value, not this entire code gets stored on the blockchain, but a trimmed version of it. But the entire block, Bitcoin blockchain fits on an iPhone. And that's the important takeaway from here. Now, what I put into there is, is up to me. I can put whatever data I put in there. For example, I can put information of a scan of a unique diamond and its history on here. That's what some people have been doing. Now, can I put the diamond on the blockchain? No, you don't put the diamond on the blockchain, but you can scan the diamond. And once it's information, once it's a digital product, you can put that and I put that in here and then I mint it, I mine it. But actually what I store on the blockchain is this unique reference to it, all this gibberish down here that usually starts with a bunch of zeros. That's what I put on the blockchain. And there are very many, think about the businesses, business models you can create here that you basically register something, some information, and then you can trade it and you can sell it. So now this information of a scan of a unique diamond and its history to exactly know where it comes from, which is often delicate. 
then this th thing can be sold because that's what's on the blockchain, the, the, the registration of this scan. Now you can put other things on the blockchain. For example, this uh, lucky guy here, he bought some NFT sneakers for $134,000. I mean, what does NFT sneakers mean? It's not actually sneakers. He bought a digital twin of a sneaker and he paid for this digital thing. He paid $134,000. Like that is crazy. Why is that? Well, if you're a gamer, you know, that's not so crazy. I mean, it's a little crazy, but you're there, you're in a game, you have, you can buy different things. You buy a skin, a protective shield, or you buy a new sword in whatever game you are, or you go here to the metaverse, to this store and you buy something. And then you hang out in the metaverse and you buy yourself some sneakers. Great. You put them on. Nike, Adidas, you know, Nike, Adidas, they are not textile producers. That's been outsourced a long time ago. They are basically designers. So they also say like, they are very active in the metaverse because they say, well, we design and we can design a digital sneaker as well as we can design something that we let produce by somebody else in order to have the textile version of it. Now, once you buy the sneakers and you hang out in the metaverse with my Adidas and you hang out with them, then what if you go from the store to a business meeting? Well, if it's on the blockchain, you can take the sneakers with you. So this up here, that might be, I don't know, a metaverse Amazon store. And this might here be the Microsoft Teams or the Facebook meeting room. I don't know. It might be different platforms that you go. But once it's on the metaverse, you take the property with you. So you take the property of the sneaker with you. And that's how the blockchain and the metaverse actually intersect. All right. So that's NFTs. NFTs, I think, is the most intuitive way how to think about the blockchain any digital information you can you can put on the blockchain